You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. How's it, everybody? Welcome to this special bonus video. Um, so something has happened because of the new rule change that we talked about earlier this week. There's been kind of an inadvertent buff to Rune of the Hidden Realm. We weren't sure where to put this information, so I decided to make a totally new video about it. Before we get into it, first, I need to introduce the person sitting to my left who is not Jimmy Wong. Yeah, unfortunately, not quite as good looking as Jimmy Wong, but... Uh... <laughs> You want to tell everybody your name? Hi, I'm Josh Murphy. I'm one of the editors here at Command Zone and Game Nets. You probably know me better as Murph. Been around here for almost two years now, hanging out with Josh and Jimmy and editing a lot of their stuff. Yeah, we, we, we called out your name at the end of every podcast for a long time. as yeah. Murph. All right, so Murph is here. He's going to help us uh, walk through this so I don't have to talk about it by myself. Yep. So let's read um, Rune of the Hidden Realm really quick here. All it's right. It's two... Green, white, blue, that's five mana total for a 4-4 four, four legendary creature, Rhino Soldier, has Vigilance and Trample. But here's the important part. Rune has an activated ability, which is pay two and tap Rune, and then you exile another target creature. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So remember the new rule mm -hmm. uh, that they just enacted, which is basically trying to make it so Commander dies triggers work? Yes. Well, let me read the new rule really quickly, just so everybody's on the same page. So the new rule says, if a commander is in a graveyard or in exile, and that card was put into that zone since the last time state-based actions were checked, its owner may put it into the command zone. So this basically changed the way that going to the command zone has worked for the last few years, in that you're, it's no longer a replacement effect when your commander dies or goes to exile, it actually hits the graveyard or the exile zone, and then, as a state-based action, you can move it into the command zone, which is a subtle thing with Rune because Rune is going to bring that card back to the battlefield, right? That's correct, yeah. So, so, so now you have to choose to leave it in exile if you want it to come back onto the battlefield. If you move it into the command zone, that move is not a replacement effect like it used to be. So if you move it into command zone, Rune won't see it anymore, and won't bring it back into the battlefield. Is that correct? Yeah. So to clarify how Rune used to work is you used to be able to put your commander back into the command zone if Rune blinked it. And at the end of the turn, if your commander was still in the command zone, Rune would bring it back. But Because be it was a replacement effect. Because it was a replacement effect. But that's no longer the case because according to the new rules change, it's no longer a replacement effect when your commander goes to the command zone from exile or from graveyard. Right, it's a state-based action, and that is actually creating a new object when it's moved. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, if you blink something with Rune, sorry, a commander with Rune, and let's say I blink your commander, Murph, yeah. and then at that moment, it goes into exile, and you say you're either going to keep it in exile, in which case it'll come back at the beginning of the next end step, or you're going to put it into the command zone, in which case it will not come back at the beginning of the next end step, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, so this creates an interesting sort of window for the rune player to really mess with the person whose commander they're blinking because there are a bunch of what we call stifle effects. So stifle is a card. Um, it's kind of a weird counter spell. And there's a few of these, but we'll, let's read stifle first. It's just one blue mana for an instant. It says counter target activated or triggered ability. Correct. So Rune's ability to bring the thing back onto the battlefield is a triggered ability, right? It's a delayed trigger. That's correct, right. yeah. So you can stifle the returning of the thing back to the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So what can happen is I go, Murph, I'm going to tap Rune, target your commander. What are you going to do? Okay, well, I want it to come back at end of turn, so I'll just go ahead and leave the commander in exile so that it can come back at end of turn, right? Right. And then when the trigger goes on the stack at end of turn to bring it back into the battlefield, I go, I'm going to stifle that trigger. Shoot. <laughs> so now here's the problem. Murph's commander is in exile, but it hasn't just been put there or anything. So he doesn't have the ability to now move it into the command zone. It's just going to stay in exile, presumably unless you have like a rift sweeper or something <laughs> until the end of the game, right? Yeah. Uh, do you so play a lot of Rift Sweepers, Murph? I do not play a lot of Rift Sweepers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a single Rift Sweeper 
in a game of Commander ever in my entire life. I, I have it in a couple of decks, yeah, but a couple. I, I maybe have cast it three <laughs> times. Like, it's not very... Maybe you got to start playing it now, though. So here's the thing. Stifle is a, a, a one card, but there's a bunch of cards that have this text. So there's... I'm going to run through them all, but just know that they all have this counter target triggered ability text. There's Disallow, Nimble Obstructionist. That's the one that cycles and does it. There's Tail's End, Trick Bind, Void Slime, and then Repudiate, which is actually half of a split card, which is replicate and repudiate. So there's seven stifle effects. They're all playable in rune. Yep. So this is ways to permanently exile someone's commander if they kind of do this wrong. And also, stifle effects are not the only way to do it. So there's some end the turn cards. So let me read Sundial of the Infinite, which is two mana for an artifact. You pay one, tap it, and it says end the turn. Activate this ability only during your turn. And what that means is you exile all spells and abilities on the stack, including delayed triggers, right? Including delayed triggers. And then you discard down to your maximum hand size, damage wears off, this turn and until end of turn effects end. I, I used to play Sundial of the Infinite in a Geist of St. Traff's tiny leader stack, if you guys all remember tiny leaders. But you could do that because there would be a delayed trigger for your angels to go away. If you ended the turn with the delayed trigger on the stack, then you get to keep your angels. So same thing kind of happens here with Rune, right? Except for that, you get to keep the thing in exile because that <laughs> delayed trigger to bring it back just never happens. Mm -hmm. uh, Sundial comes in untapped, basically costs three mana. So if you say, I'm going to ruin your thing, and they leave it in exile, you can play Sundial and activate it and just permanently exile their commander. There's also Time Stop and Days Undoing, which will end turns. Uh, they cost quite a bit more mana, but you could still do it. There's Glorious End, but that's in red. Um, so there's kind of like about 10 effects that will sort of trick someone into permanently exiling their commander. Here's the dilemma, though, I think, and the reason that rune gets so much more powerful here is that you don't know if the rune player has those effects most of the time, right? That's, that's true. You're playing mind games at that point. Yeah, so if I have rune and any amount of open mana, and I say, I'm going to exile your commander, and this could even be done on the end step before my turn, right? Beca or, or just before the end step before my turn. Mm-hmm. So it's just going to be really hard. It's I, I, I'm calling it the stifle dilemma, right? So I go, exile your commander, Murph. What do you do? Because you don't know if I have a stifle in my hand or not. Yeah, now that I know that this rule, new rule exists and I know how it works, I can look at that open mana and think, shoot, what do I do? Do I put it in the command zone and just be safe? But then I have to pay commander tax and play it out again next turn. And that's going to set me really far back. Or do I take the chance that he doesn't have a stifle and he's just bluffing and send it to exile? Problem is, if I'm wrong, I never get to use my commander ever again that entire game. Right. It's a really interesting thing. And I think rune players probably want to play at least a couple of stifle effects in their decks now just to be able to bluff that they have it because the power to just two mana tap my commander puts you on the spot. And if you guess wrong... You, you might just have no chance to win now because there's, I mean, think if you're a Feather deck or a Greven deck. Those are both my decks, by the way. Um, <laughs> but lots of decks are just built around their commanders. And if it's in exile, you have, like, if, you, if you're a Feather deck and your Feather deck and your Feather gets exiled, you can't win that game, right? Like, I mean, barring really unforeseen for circumstances. Yeah. I had a friend uh, who used to play a stifle type effect in his deck and he would stifle fetch land triggers yep. and then side it out like after the first round. But just having that bluff, having that threat of something is so incredibly powerful because it makes people think, it makes people try to play around that effect. That was and in modern or something? Where that you was in modern, yeah. Rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how much better do you think this makes Rune? I mean, Rune's already a pretty decent deck. But uh, not like CEDH. Yeah, you know? definitely not CEDH. I still don't think this makes it CEDH, but it does make it quite a bit more powerful. Makes it more annoying. Yeah. Like, there's definitely some feel-bads here. Because how do you think you're going to play this most of the time? I tap rune, target your commander. What do you think you're going to default to? I mean, my default is probably just going to be, okay, I'm going to send it to exile and hope for the best. Because if I put it into the command zone, we, we know from the stats episode we just did that you're unlikely to cast your commander again. Yeah. Um, but then if they do happen to stifle it, they can just end your game right there, kind of. Yeah, because right? if my deck is built around my commander, which most commander decks are... Sucks to be me. Not much I can do about it. Maybe if you see them take out Rune, you, you grab one of your decks that 
functions better if the commander's not in play. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> a lot of people want to hide their commanders before they start the game for that kind of reason, so mm-hmm. maybe that's not cool. Um, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. I think it does make Rune quite a bit more powerful. I don't think it makes Rune even close to the most powerful commander in the format, so it's mostly fine. I did talk to um, Sheldon on the rules committee and just asked them, like, were you aware of this Rune thing? And, they, and he was like, yes, um, but it was just kind of a cost-to-benefit analysis as far as like it was still worth it to make the dice trigger change and just like one card one commander gets a little more powerful but not overpowered seemed like a fine change to make which i agree with i mean do you agree with that yeah totally i mean so be it rune gets more powerful maybe a little bit more annoying to deal with but maybe your friend in your play group who plays rune doesn't play stifle effects maybe you don't have to play around that like it's not the end of the world and i think having the commander dice triggers actually work actually function like they probably should have in the first place i think is uh way way bigger benefits than any downside that this rule might cause. Yeah, it's one card. It's one one card. All right, so we just wanted everybody out there to be aware that this was sort of a thing. So if you see Rune now in the command zone, uh, be wary (laughs) because this might be uh, the kind of shenanigans that people are pulling. At least think before you do anything. (laughs) Yeah. All right. As always, big thanks to our editing, graphics, and logistics team, which is Manson Lung, Ashlyn Rose, Lady Danger, Craig Blanchett, Josh Murphy, that's me, Jake Boss, Alfred Estaca, and Sam Waldo. And special thanks to Jeffrey Palmer, who does the living card animations that begin and end each of our shows and sit behind us here on set. Yep. Murph, thanks for helping me out. Thanks for filling in for Mr. Jimmy Wong. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hopefully I was uh, I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let him know. Let him, give, give Murph some love, everybody. Thanks, All guys. Right. We'll see you uh, at the next video, I suppose. See Peace. ya. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>